Good morning, this is Kim with Floral Design by Heidi. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the Easter cylinder vase. Uh, first off, happy Easter, and I'm happy to be back again with you guys and uh, seeing you guys here today. Uh, you'll see the instructions below hold the directions and the supply list and a printable version of bunny ears. Now, if you don't want to make your bunny ears, that's fine. And I'm not going to show you how to make the bunny ears today. You can also go out and get a headband or some type of other um, ears to use for your design. It's just an option because um, we uh, finish off the design with the little felt bunny ears. So to start today, you're going to need your cylinder. It's going to be a five inch cylinder. You're going to fill it about halfway you don't want to fill it all the way up because the water is going to be displaced and as you stick in the flowers the water is going to come up. So there's several ways that you can start this. If you're inexperienced or if you feel safer giving yourself a grid you can take even just your regular tape at home and make yourself a little grid across the vase. If you can see that a little closer that way. Um, I prefer not to do this just because I find it harder to change the water later because I have tape running through the design. But it's um, a good starting place. And I'm showing you just my regular Scott tape over here, but just because um, uh, I don't have the floral tape here with me today, but also many of you wouldn't have a floral tape at home either. So that's two good reasons to show you this method. So you can take it and make um, several pieces going across to make your grid. I'll show you what that looks like, but then I'm going to remove mine because I don't like to have it in there. So you can make a grid like that. You don't want the holes to get too small or it's going to get very hard to put your flowers in. So giving yourself nice spacing on your grid is going to be important. So I'm going to take mine off now that I showed you guys how to do that because I don't want it in there. I like to change my water and keep my flowers fresh keep them eating and drinking. All right, so use your grid or don't use your grid. Whichever you like to do, it's just fine. There's not the right or the wrong way. So today, <clears throat> you're also gonna need either your garden shears and scissors, um, a little knife, or this, um, this is a soap holder. So it has these little ridges on it, see? And this is gonna remove the thorns from the roses. You can also ask your florist if you're picking up your roses from the florist to remove them for you. This is a very good option so that you don't have to have uh, any cuts or anything on your hands from the thorns because they're um, quite sharp. <laughs> All right, then next I'm gonna show you here. We need eggs for decoration as well. Inside these eggs, we're gonna put a little Easter egg hunt. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So inside the eggs, you can put little candies, close them up. And these are gonna go in your arrangements. And they might fit one, they might fit two. You just have to play with it. Hershey's Kisses fit really well in there. Um, Hershey bars, little Milka bars. You can see we've got little Milka bars today in Hershey's. We're gonna go with one. It looks like it won't close. Yeah, so one a piece in these small eggs. And then you also need bamboo skewers. And you'll see that they have these little holes in them right here. And you'll just place that in there into it and these sticks will be later going in our design with the eggs so you can see the eggs so you'll do that with all three of your eggs put your candy if you want to if you're giving it to someone else or yourself to find later then that's fine uh, the next thing that you're gonna need is probably some gloves it's a good idea um, for handling any of the thorny roses if you didn't get them dethorned. Also the um, 
uh, spray roses have a bit of thorns on them and we're going to be using them today uh, towards the top and they're very very small so you want to protect your delicate fingers so that might be something that you would want we also have a number 40 ribbon today this is a satin ribbon and i'll show you what that means on here I don't know if you can read that, but the directions will be in below with um, the size of that ribbon. You can see it's a couple inches wide there. And then again, you can use a tape or you can ask your florist if you have, they have these things called dashes. They're little squares of glue and you need only six of them because we're gonna go measure that out around the vase towards the end here and you're going to need three on the front and three on the back to stick this to the base. It's just a nice decorative uh, little accent. If you want to omit that, it is your design. Do what you would like to do because there is no wrong way. Okay, so first today we're going to start with the greenery. You want to put your base of the greenery in first always uh, so you can get the shape. So today we have uh, Salal, also known as lemon leaf. It's this nice limey colored leaf. And we're going to cut it to fit. So to cut to fit to, for, to your vase, you're going to hold it up to your vase. Look for um, where the lip is right here at the very bottom. Not here, here. Otherwise, you're going to have to cut again. So you go ahead and you measure it against the vase like that and you go ahead and put it in the vase. It's important to keep the leaves above the water line. See how we have that above the water line? That's uh, so that the water level stays um, high and the water stays clean. So I won't measure here for every stem just because I have a little more um, Experience. This can be kind of cutting loosey goosey. But the proper way to get those cuts is to measure against your container the height that you want it to be at and place that in the vase. Cut for the angle at the side. And you're going to need roughly about 15. 10 to 15 stems of the Salal. It really does depend on how big uh, the pieces are or if it has multiple shoots on them that you can use two pieces in one. So you get two pieces out of one stem. Um, again, it's just really depending on the pieces that you, you have, how many pieces you're gonna need. So that's why I say anywhere from 10 to 15. This one here is another example of having two stems that you can use in one. So we're going to cut one off of this side and one off the other side and now one stem has given us two pieces that we can use. Now you don't want to overfill it with a whole bunch of greenery, it's just to give you a base to put the flower stems into and of course to fill it out and make it look really nice and lush. Um, so that's your good size. I'm going to trim this down just a little bit as well, so I'm going to just take that and give that a rough chop because I feel I've gotten a little tall there. So when you're balancing out the size of your arrangement to the size of the container, it should be roughly the size of the container and its height. So five and five is going to be roughly 10 inches tall, 12 inches tall, and um, the same in the, in the width to balance the container because you don't want tipping to be a problem or the flowers to jump out. All those things are important in how it will be held together mechanically. All right, so if you've done a grid, those are already staying in there for you. Make your adjustments as needed. You can take them in and out and trim them if you feel you've gotten too tall. All right, 
The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place our larger flowers first. So we have the Fuji Mum that we're working with today. It looks like a little firework. Ooh, they come in these little nets on them. You're gonna take the net off and you're just gonna fluff it very lightly like that, okay? And then we're gonna measure for the center. And I have one here who has a petal that's gotten wet, so I'm gonna take off my wet petal. This has gotten wet. And you don't want that in there because it will go bad. There you go. So the wet petal's gone. And I'm still a little high here, so again, I'm gonna cut just a bit more off. We're gonna do one in the, in the center. Oop. And also to the side over here. And I'm, I'm sitting designing with you today so I can be a camera height here. Um, and if you feel comfortable sitting designing, that's fine. Um, I found that it's a little bit easier to be standing at a level to your design. Um, when you're designing at the studio, we're always standing and we're designing because of being able to see the whole arrangement. So placing all those Fuji mums in there. Fluffing them out just slightly. That's a little too tall. Just taking off some of these petals that got wet over here. Yeah, there we go. So now you will have them in four corners. I'll show you kind of how that looks. Four corners and one in the center. This is the five point system. And it sets it up to fill a nice amount of space there and give you a balance in the design with moving around the color. The next flower you're going to place in the design is going to be your roses because they're the next biggest flower and today we're working with some beautiful pink roses. You're going to do the same thing, you're going to measure it out and place them in. And you can just stick one here, here, and here. I'm gonna turn my design for you. Here. There you go. All right. Now we've got one in each little quadrant here. The next thing you can place is your beautiful filler accent flower. And today I'm using Status. It's a nice purple flower that is um, feels kind of like a tissue paper. So you want to hold your container as you're placing that in there. It's going to give you a little bit of leverage when you do that, to place that in there. I 
and you're just going to place them around different parts of the vase to space out the color. All right, so I'm going to show you the top view of that again without trying to, to spill that. All right, the next thing we have is our beautiful spray roses we talked about. And I've dethorned those already, but I'll show you the kind of method that I was talking about. You're gonna go like this with either your uh, soap thing, like that, and it will take the thorns off. And you can see there's these tiny, tiny little thorns on this, on the top of these stems up here. And they're quite sharp. So you can put your gloves on to do that if you would like to. I'm very used to the thorns and I don't really feel them anymore. So just placing them around, you're gonna have four stems to do this with. If you choose to use more, it is your design. The recipe is below, but you can play with it, change the colors, you know, make it your own. This is only the, the shape and the method of putting it together. Right here. And you can see this one, I didn't take thorns off. Those are some big thorns. placing those in different areas and spreading around the orange. Now these are great because look, look at how these came in. Look, these big long laterals on there. These long stems again are called laterals and look at those thorns, my goodness. So you can cut the pieces off and dethorn them if you need to. I'm sectioning this out to be more pieces so I can get them going around my base a bit more spaced out. You can see I'm just filling in the holes, going around filling in the holes. Now you can see um, through the camera over here that I have <laughs> quite a spot over here that I could place one in. So I'll go ahead and whoop, do so. I'm balancing this on the cork boards here so that you can see today. camera equipment is on the way so I can give you guys a better view. <laughs> but starting out, you know how it is. So, these are our first DIY videos that we've been doing for you guys and I hope that you've been enjoying them. Um, the green beer stein that we've done for St. Patrick's Day. Hope you guys have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. And see, you just keep turning your design here. And then that is all of our roses. And now we'll go back in with the daisies. And you can leave your uh, nets on these if you prefer. I'm just being very gentle as I go in and around the Fuji mums because these will have a habit of kind of Flittering apart if um, you want you can leave these on to the end and and do so Lulu, no. We have Babalu over here today the shop doll What are you doing? Do you want to say hello? Should you should you say hello? I Think he wants to we'll say hello in just a minute. All right, so then these are daisies. We're using lavender daisies today because um, you know Easter has these beautiful pastel colors and this is so far looking pretty summery, but we're in, um, incorporating some nice pastel colors. And 
take off the pieces that are either going to be below the water or too short here. And I'm going to place a piece right over there for you to see. Again, holding your container so it doesn't run away. It's a little tall. Cut it again. There you go. Now you can see the daisies have gone in. All right, very nice. And you just keep turning the design. You can see where your holes are and pull. You can pull your greenery through and we'll go back in the end and um, reapply the greenery to the bottom um, so that you have a nice edge uh, when it's finished. So looking good there. We have a few more daisies that we can stick in. If you want to stop with your daisies at that point because maybe you don't like that many, then that's fine. It really just depends on the look that you're creating. You can see it's quite full at the moment even with the buds that we have, the blossoms that we have. So it would be okay if you would like to. Now I, I like very um, full designs. So I'm gonna just finish up with this last one and I did, I did have one extra stem, so I won't be using that one. So you're just making these decisions as you go when you design, because each blossom and each stem is always different. So it really just depends on the pieces that you're working with. You have to make these um, design decisions uh, as you go. Okay, and then I know that some of you probably loathe carnations, but they make a great statement piece in um, some pieces that you create because carnations these days, they come in all kinds of beautiful colors. Look at this color, guys, it's gorgeous. So. I know, well, it may not be some people's favorite or they think that's too cheap a flower. Um, it really adds a lot of spunk to an arrangement. Um, and I just like to touch base on that because there are so many fun carnations these days. They're frilly and colorful and all kinds of neat carnations. So that's all I'll say about the carnations and the carnation lovers keep on going on. Um, it really just depends on the utility um, and how you use them, but they can be really um, quite delightful in a, in a design and add an element that was missing or a shape or a texture that was missing. So you can see we have a lot of different shapes and textures um, in the flowers here. And you're just gonna stick these in the different quadrants. As you see, we've got that five point system in the middle, still going around and um, gonna stick them in the different quadrants the few pieces that we have here. So you can kind of follow the pattern with the roses because we did even numbers for those. And a good design has a combination of both even and odd numbers in it um, to space it out and add pattern and, and repetition. Thing. And I know this already looks quite full, so we don't need all of these. Um, we had just beautiful blossoms today. Um, really full, hearty, beautiful blossoms. We are going to be um, now using Astromeria. And if you're not a fan of Astromeria, just go ahead and omit it. You, you don't have to use it. So um, I'll show you those blossoms here. Hold on. Let me get one out. They're kind of tangled. There we go. We can kind of shake them out to get them untangled. This beautiful Ashramaria, those beautiful multi tone buds in them. So we'll go ahead and just stick a few of those in there as well. Now, the, the, the recipe is a suggestion, it's not a, not a you have to do it type deal. Like I said, we had nice buds today, really full buds. So we are gonna. me. I'm gonna go a little off script. <laughs> Pardon me. Believe it or not, allergies. <laughs> uh, the irony is never wasted on me. All right. And then you're just getting these little flecks of white in there to lighten everything up and really play into that pastel color palette um, that we desire for Easter. Those whites and 
purples and yellows and pinks. These are really the, the springtime colors um, that you would see the most. Uh, so it has a, a hint of those bright summery colors and also still those nice beautiful pastel colors. So you get a really beautiful balance. Again, hold your container. You don't want it walking away or tipping over or any of those things. So you always want to hold your container as you're placing a flower. Plus it gives you a little bit of leverage actually. So um, this flower is wanting to jump out. So I'm going to cut it a little bit more because we're cutting and we're coming over by the edge. So you don't need as much height on the edge of the container, as you can see. All right, last one. So then this is the last estuary and I want to place it over here on the side over here in your guys' view. All right, so that is our beautiful blossoms. It's just slightly changed from our design that's available online uh, due to the impact of flowers available due to COVID. Now I know a lot of people don't think um, flowers being so impacted, but our flowers come from all around the world. Um, they're coming from places like Thailand and Holland and South America and South America has been having some interesting weather. So um, roses have been uh, having an interesting time finding roses. So these are things that uh, happen in our industry and the farming industry as I'm sure many of these other farmers think about that as well. Um, we are subject to mother nature's discretion when it comes to our designs, availabilities of flowers and all of those things. So um, we've just tweaked the design. And like I said, at um, you, when you're at home and you're designing, it's the beauty about designing something is that you can really tailor it to your tastes um, and your likes or the availability of the season and still get some very similar effects with similar colors and just an inversion of color. So we put those button mums in there now, and that is the last of our flowers. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our bunny ears. We're gonna cut those a little shorter because they're a little tall. Put your bunny ears in anywhere you like, but make sure you pair them together so he doesn't look like he's Ears are far away. So a nice little bunny ear on there for you. You can see that now. And then if you want to put the candies in your eggs, if you don't want to, that's fine too. Again, on the bamboo stick that we talked about, give them a cut to size and you can stick them all around the arrangement just to give that extra Easter touch. easy to make one in one of these plastic eggs so you can very easily accommodate that. All right so now we've placed our eggs in different locations around the bouquet. You can see and lastly we have the ribbon. Now again make your personal decisions on that. You can do it if you like. Um, you can also omit it. 
but if you would like to include a ribbon around your container, you can either tie it off as a bow if you're using a different type of ribbon. But if you are using satin, you wanna go ahead and take that ribbon, measure it off to your diameter, and then give it a cut. Okay, there you go. And then you're gonna take these dashes or you can use your tape at the end. It depends what you would like to do. This gives it a nice clean look um, to have the dash and you place that on the ribbon on one side. Three pieces just like that. Other side. And this is a simple way of adding a finishing touch to a vase. You can use an Easter ribbon or the satin, or if you just like clear glass, you can leave it alone. Then you will peel back those dashes. Just like that, peeling them back. See you clear little stickies there. And then you'll stick that on the vase in the center. So now it sticks to the vase. And then the other place, other part of that's gonna come around and line up with the dashes. And you'll just stick that down. And there you have it. Nice, beautiful Easter cylinder vase with an egg hunt and cute little felt bunny ears for yourself, for your neighbor, or just because. Thank you and happy Easter, everybody.